Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Why don't we begin? Um, my name is Jeff Thies, and it's a real pleasure to have this opportunity for discussion with Jennifer Leitch, the Vice President of Corporate Responsibility for CBRE. Our conversation today is part of the uh, Global Business Insights video series for the Center for International Business Education. And um, our focus will really be on CBRE, really our conversation will have three kind of categories in it, if you will. The first is uh, Jennifer is going to share a bit about CBRE, the business, its dimensions and divisions, its global footprint. And then she will speak specifically about the, um, the approach that CBRE has to corporate responsibility and the work of corporate responsibility within CBRE. And then we'll ask her some questions about kind of how she got to where she got. And um, her career uh, path and development that led to the role that she has right now. Um, I'm a clinical assistant professor and also director of the Institute for Business Ethics and Sustainability. And many of those uh, joining, the joining this presentation today are taking a class called Business Ethics and Sustainability. And the focus on corporate responsibility, corporate social responsibility and the process of designing it and implementing it and measuring it is a key part of what we're looking at in the class. So we're really excited to have Jennifer join us. So um, what, what uh, we will do is have a conversation, really I'll ask Jennifer some questions and she will reflect on her experience and her role with us. And then after that, then I'll invite it to broad question and answer where all of you who are logged in can also ask Jennifer any question. And like I said, we've got a hard stop at one and we just really look forward to the opportunity of this conversation. So Jennifer, thank you so much for being with us today. It's a great pleasure and a great honor. Um, and so I wonder if you could just talk first about CBRE, um, kind of describe it for those who may not be familiar with it and its um, kind of reach and footprint. Sure, uh, thank you so much, Jeff, for the invitation to be here. Thank you for the correct pronunciation of my last name. It's a challenging one, and I certainly appreciate um, those who uh, ask in advance. Um, so, as you noted, um, I am with CBRE. I've been here for about six years, and CBRE is the world's largest commercial real estate services and investment firm. Oh, that's a mouthful, right? So, what does that actually mean? So, we provide services to owners and occupiers uh, of commercial real estate. So if you are interested in buying or selling commercial real estate, and that could be an office building, it could be a warehouse or distribution center, it could be a multifamily apartment building, it could be um, a retail establishment, it could be um, land. If you're interested in buying or selling um, those types of properties, we can help you with that. If you're interested in leasing those types of properties, we can help you with that. If you're interested in, um, you know, investing in commercial real estate, in developing or actually, you know, having a project built, a, a commercial real estate project built, we do all of those things. Um, if you are trying to figure out how much is my building worth, um, how much could I potentially sell it for, um, given the market that I'm in and, and uh, the economy, you know, we can help you with all of those things. Um, and we do that for clients large and small. Um, we are a global company, as Jeff noted, so we um, are uh, operating in more than 100 countries around the world, and we have more than 100,000 employees. I mean, that's still hard for me to get my head around, even years into the being in the business. Um, you know, that's the size of a city, right? Um, just one company providing these types of services um, to clients around the world. Um, and so again, we operate um, in kind of all major geographies. We do operate primarily in urban areas um, in about 500 offices across those geographies. Um, you know, our clients, again, as I mentioned, are large and small. Um, we serve more than 90% of the Fortune 100. So the 100 largest companies, you know, here in the US. And we also serve companies um, and organizations all the way down to, you know, maybe a local, um, you know, salon or restaurant who's looking for a new location um, to, uh, for, their, for their business. Um, so we could be working with um, every major brand, most major brands probably familiar with, um, as well as um, uh, smaller companies. Again, really anyone who needs um, support with um, their commercial real estate. Um, I guess the other major part of our business that I didn't mention is, um, is the outsourcing part of our business. 
So I talked about if you're wanting to buy or sell or at least commercial real estate, but say you own commercial real estate um, properties and you, uh, you know, need somebody to actually manage that on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, you need somebody to collect the rent from the tenants to make sure the landscaping gets taken care of, that the windows get washed, that the restrooms get clean, that there's security, there's somebody at the concierge desk, somebody in the mail room, right? Somebody running the cafeteria. We provide all of those outsourcing um, types of activities for occupiers and owners of commercial real estate as well. So I, I hopefully um, if you knew nothing about commercial real estate, maybe you have a little bit better understanding understanding now of the types of services that we offer. Does that help, Jeff? Yeah, that's very helpful. I wonder if you could, um, is there any kind of concentration in that broad array of services? Is it, do you find a concentration by country, a concentration by kind of service sector, or just kind of how that broad scope might um, uh, kind of slice and dice, if you will? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, you know, we do operate, you know, in the Americas, in EMEA, right? So Europe, Middle East, and Africa, and in Asia Pacific. So pretty much in all major geographies. Um, you know, office is probably, office, you know, real estate properties are, are probably um, our, our largest um, area of focus for the business. Uh, but again, we operate, um, you know, and, and provide services to all different types of, of commercial real estate. So office probably being the primary type, but certainly have our hands in, in all different types of commercial real estate. And in terms of types of clients, um, yeah, it's all over the map. I mean, some of the clients that are um, really maybe the more um, exciting ones these days are clients like life sciences clients, right? Or, um, you know, um, technology clients. Um, they have really different needs than maybe other types of clients, right, in terms of, you know, what they're doing in that real estate um, versus, um, you know, maybe someone who's, you know, using as a retail uh, storefront, for example. Um, so, again, um, it's hard to, to kind of answer the question because we operate pretty much everywhere and with pretty much everyone. <laughs> right, but running... Having a client that runs a world-class research lab in their footprint is very different than one that runs a, uh, a restaurant, for example. That's exactly, exactly. And, and we have people who specialize, obviously, in different client types in different geographies, absolutely. And, um, and just maybe for the sake of the students, um, the, the, the questions of power and just the, all of the design around the, the, the real estate itself, is that a place that CBRE is involved in? Uh, so CBRE does have a subsidiary um, called Trammell Crow Company. Um, if you are in Dallas or from Dallas, you might be familiar with Trammell Crow Company. Um, it is one of the largest developers of um, commercial real estate in the United States. So if you're looking to build um, a, a, a property, um, we typically work with people who have an idea of what they want and then we will build it to their specifications. Um, we can certainly provide advice and guidance. We can build it uh, to be a green building, for example, if that's something that the client um, is interested in. Um, and, and that business is actually starting to expand as well. Um, that business just acquired a small company in um, London about a year ago um, that focuses on building multifamily um, or you know, apartment types of housing. Um, so, so yes, we can um, definitely help with that. Um, we also do, um, you know, help clients with building out a space. So if you, um, you know, just rented a space in an office building, for example, you know, you might walk in and there might not be any walls other than the four walls on the outside. How do you actually divide up that space and design it to be a space that is, you know, um, you know, interesting to be in that's, um, you know, helps your employees be more productive. That's a healthy type of workspace. So we do that type of project management to build out a space as well. Thank you. Um, and maybe if we could shift a bit to your role and specifically corporate responsibility, what is corporate social respo corporate responsibility for CBRE and how does it see it and what's its place within the overall business strategy and structure? Yeah, absolutely. So when we think about corporate responsibility, we think about being, uh, you know, doing business in an ethical and responsible way, right? And that includes kind of all aspects of environmental sustainability and social responsibility. It has to do with the way we um, govern the um, organization as well. Um, some people, you know, people use different terms to describe some of the same things. I know, Jeff, you were saying corporate responsibility and you kind of slipped in maybe corporate social responsibility. Um, some people also say sustainability or corporate citizenship or even ESG. Um, so if you haven't heard that acronym, it stands for environmental social governance. 
Um, but really it's, a, it's thinking about all of those things that have to do with um, how the company does business, right? Um, and that really, um, you know, uh, infiltrates all parts of the business, all parts of our operations. And so um, my team really looks at um, what the company is doing across all of those dimensions. And those dimensions could be things like environmental sustainability, um, community involvement and corporate philanthropy, workplace safety and well-being, um, people and culture, uh, diversity and inclusion, some of those types of things, ethics and compliance, corporate governance, responsible procurement. Um, so kind of all those things maybe fall under the umbrella of corporate responsibility. Um, my team specifically manages a couple of those areas directly, and then we try to influence and then report on all of those areas. So in terms of the reporting side of things, we put together a report each year called our Corporate Responsibility Report that covers all those areas I just described. It talks about what the company is currently doing in terms of our programs and policies. Um, it talks about our goals um, and, and where we're going with those things. Um, so my team needs to know what the company's doing in all of our regions around the world and all of our business lines and all of those areas so that we can communicate that information in this report um, which is then read by our investors. Um, we are a publicly traded company. Um, so our investors care about this information, right? They wanna be investing in a company that's gonna grow over time, that's paying attention to these things that could potentially be risks for the company, right? And that we have our act together. Um, you know, prospective employees and current employees read this report. You know, they wanna work for a company that cares about the same things that they care about. They wanna know that this is a responsible business. Um, you know, clients care about this information. They want to make sure that if they're hiring us to work with them, that, you know, they can trust us, that we're a responsible business, that we align with their values, right? So doing this report each year and responding to all kinds of questions we get throughout the year from all of those stakeholders is a really big um, piece of my job and my team's responsibilities. And then my team directly manages a couple of those areas um, uh, ourselves. So my team is directly responsible for environmental sustainability, so that means my team calculates the company's carbon footprint each year. We set goals to reduce that footprint and we work to get the company to achieve those goals. We look at things like climate change and climate risk. And what does that mean to the company? You know, what might happen in terms of, um, you know, the way the world is moving with regard to climate change that could potentially pose risks to the company. And those could be risks like, you know, things you might think of like sea level rise or increased severity of storms. Or it could also be things like, you know, um, reputational risk or changes in the marketplace or customers saying, you know, um, are you keeping up with these things? It could be regulatory risk, right? If we're being um, faced with new laws and regulations that we have to follow in various countries where we operate around the world um, because they're going in a, a certain direction because climate change is happening. So my team focuses on all of those environmental sustainability types of activities and then we also focus on our communities and giving activities, which includes our um, charitable giving and employee volunteering programs, um, which again, kind of supplement some of the other things that we do, um, you know, in terms of um, the environment and in terms of um, diversity, equity and inclusion, et cetera. And so um, again, we directly manage a couple of those things on my team, but we know what the company's doing um, across the business and all of those other areas. And we work to influence the business in those other areas, right? So, you know, I don't run the people or, you know, sometimes called the human resources team. You know, I don't run the procurement team. I don't run the corporate, um, I don't run the compliance team or the ethics team. Um, but I have an understanding of what they're doing. I have an understanding of what our stakeholders are expecting us to be doing in those areas. And I work to try to influence those people and those teams across the business to help the company continue to move in the right direction. And so when you're talking about business strategy, you know, really a lot of these things are really, again, incorporated throughout the business. Um, and, you know, we can't have a successful business if we don't operate with integrity and operate in an ethical manner, right? That's, that's kind of very, very core to who we are as a company. Um, that's one of our core values actually is integrity. And I know companies say, oh, we have core values, right? But, you know, CBRE, we really do know and live our values. They're very simple. They're very easy to remember. They make an acronym called RISE. And it's respect, integrity, service, and excellence. And, uh, and that's really kind of very fundamental to who we are. And without, you know, kind of having that as our, our foundation, you know, we wouldn't be who we are as a company. Um, so, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an idea of what, when I say corporate responsibility, mm -hmm 
how we define that here and the types of that I'm directly responsible for. Yeah, that's really helpful. Thank you. I, I, I wonder, and I think you've kind of described it, but I just want to label it for the, the benefit of everybody. Uh, sometimes people, you know, at, at uh, LMU will sometimes say, yeah, th those are all, I, I mean, th this is, can be a bias. I don't want to say this is an attitude at the university, so let me characterize, but it can be like, this is all a bunch of nice stuff, but really business is about money. Thank you. And it, it is this idea of profit really as primary and really, really, that's really what business is about. Um, and then you'll hear people say it's not a contrast between profit and purpose, but it's profit through purpose, that there's a relationship between profit and, and really how a business understand its responsibilities and what it's trying to achieve. And so I wonder if you could just share a little bit about your perspective or CBRE's perspective about that kind of almost foundational question. Yeah, you know, I would say that, you know, the prevailing thought um, 20 or 10 or maybe even five years ago amongst many people was that, you know, businesses are in business to make money, right? And of course, right, if we aren't profitable, if we aren't making money, we don't have a business, right? right. Of course, we have to make money, right? But um, if we aren't doing it in a responsible way, um, then we don't have a business either. Um, you know, so we really do, um, you know, consider our corporate responsibility initiatives and consider the needs of all of our stakeholders when we're making business decisions. Again, we are publicly traded, so we have investors, we have shareholders who buy our stock. They expect that stock to grow in value over time and they want to make money. And how do we do that? Well, of course, we do that through our core business services and business functions. But if we aren't doing that in a responsible way, you know, we maybe will be hit with fines, right? That could be detrimental to the business. We could not be able to attract and retain top talent. That could be detrimental to the business, right? Um, if we're doing things that are, um, you know, detrimental to the environment, right? Um, that could be detrimental to the company's reputation as well as potentially, you know, legal ramifications. So um, the company um, about, a, about a year and a half ago, um, signed on to a big statement that was made by a number of leading CEOs in the United States. Um, that group of leading CEOs is called the Business Roundtable. And they put out a statement um, called the Statement on the Purpose of a Corporation. And literally up until that point in uh, August of 2019, you know, the Business Roundtable and other entities were saying, you know, the purpose of a corporation is to make money, right? Mm -hmm. Now we're saying the purpose of a corporation is to, yes, obviously we need to, to grow, and uh, but we need to have a purpose, right? We need to exist mm -hmm. to do something other just, than just to make money. And we need to exist um, to benefit the needs of all of our stakeholders, not just our shareholders, our investors, but all of our stakeholders, our clients, our employees, our communities, the environment. Um, and that was a really big deal. Um, mm -hmm. Again, you were probably saying that's common sense. <laughs> and to some of us, that is kind of common sense, right? That's how I've been kind of, you know, working in the, the more than a decade now in this career path, um, specifically focused on these things, right? That companies need to do all these other things in order to be successful, right? They can't just be making money and not care about any of their stakeholders. But this was a really big shift in the mindset of, of many people. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, I would absolutely say that, again, you know, we, we have to exist as a business, but we can't exist as a business if we don't do things in the right way. Well, thank, thank you so much. That shift from shareholder capitalism to, excuse me, yeah, shareholder capitalism to stakeholder capitalism, uh, like you said, through that business roundtable statement. Um, where do you see and how do you see this related to the global environment within which CBRE does business? Um, maybe you could reflect on the global compact as one expression of that, but also is this a, uh, kind of how does this, how do you implement this on a global basis and does it does it bring a competitive advantage? Is it a challenging kind of environment? How do you, how do you, this, how do you think about this from a global perspective? Yeah, you know, um, in a company this large, right, um, it can be very challenging to implement some of these initiatives consistently on a global scale. And certainly there are differences in, um, in our various regions, right? You know, you think about um, governments, for example, right? Here in the United States for the last four years, the administration has not put a focus on the environment, right? They actually withdrew the company from the Paris Climate Agreement. Now look at every one of those other 99 countries where we operate, every one of those countries is still a signatory to the Paris Climate Agreement, right? So when people um, were saying um, to us things like, oh, well, the US government doesn't really care about the environment anymore. Why is CBRE you know, still doing these things? 
you know, we don't just operate here in the US, we operate in all these countries around the world and oh, our clients do too. Again, our clients, large and small, but we have clients again in all these different countries. And so they're trying to comply with whatever the regulations are in their countries. Um, and their regulations are saying, we need to limit global greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so it absolutely is, um, you know, uh, something to think about when we're in a, a global company is not just our local context and getting kind of caught up in what I'm hearing on the news every day, you know, being a citizen of the United States, um, but being, you know, uh, a citizen of the world, right, and understanding what's happening in the, in the broader world, and, and what is our part, what is the place that, you know, what's the part that we play um, in the world, you know, given who we are. Again, we are the world's largest company of our kind. And if we do things right, it can really matter. Um, you know, I don't know how many of you have heard this statistic that um, globally, 39% um, of global greenhouse gas emissions can be attributed to buildings. That's huge, right? That's a huge portion of global greenhouse gas emissions. And as the world's largest commercial real estate services company, if we can help influence all of our clients, right, all of these owners and occupiers of commercial real estate, we can actually make an impact. We can actually help reduce global greenhouse gas emissions, right? This is not just an exaggeration, right? This is reality for us. Um, and because we have that type of scale, it's amazing, right? And so um, in uh, just last month, CBRE made a commitment um, to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions as well as support our clients reducing their greenhouse gas emissions, right? So that's something that we can really do as a result of the global scale of this company. Um, but again, you know, a lot of the things that we focus on might be more relevant in some countries than others. Um, one example of that might be, um, you know, things re related to sustainable procurement. Um, for example, there is a law in the United Kingdom, there's a similar one now in Australia, um, asking companies to really take a, a, a action with regards to modern slavery and to make public statements um, with regard to their actions um, uh, related to modern slavery. So that has to do with looking into your supply chain and making sure that your suppliers are doing business in an ethical and responsible way. And, and if they're not, right, or if you see opportunities to make improvements, you know, it's your obligation, it's your responsibility to work to reduce those modern slavery, you know, human rights types of impacts in your supply chain. Um, again, that maybe is not as um, prominent in the conversation here in the United States, but it absolutely is in many of our countries around the world. And, you know, we do have a global human rights policy, for example, and we have a global supplier code of conduct where we expect all of our suppliers to be operating in a socially and environmentally responsible manner. Um, and, uh, and again, with our size and scale, we really can um, help influence some of those issues. Um, you mentioned the global compact. Um, so CBRE uh, became a signatory of the United Nations Global Compact in 2007. Um, you know, it's the world's largest um, organization, um, you know, um, advocating for corporate sustainability initiatives, right? And so um, we use that global size and scale and we align ourselves with other global companies who are saying, you know, we care about these issues and we're going to ensure that we use our business in a responsible way to, you know, minimize negative environmental impacts to advance efforts related to human rights, to make sure that we have, you know, no corruption within our business, um, you know, to focus on labor issues, to focus on the people, not only within our business, but also within our supply chains. And again, you know, this is just about doing good business, right? This is not about, um, you know, being a, um, you know, being a tree hugger, right? Or, or you know, uh, being someone who, you know, just really, really, um, you know, wants to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. you know, about the environment, cares about people, of course we care about those things. But these things are, you know, fundamental to doing business well and being successful in the global economy. Um, you know, it's not really an either or at this point. It really is those benefits of, of, of uh, commitment to grow through this strategy, to manage risk through this strategy, to really um, build reputation, to acquire both clients and um, and personnel. It's, it's really all of those business strategies that are advanced in the ways that you're describing. Yeah, exactly, exactly, 100%. Um, it's all of our stakeholders and understanding um, what their needs are and understanding how we can make sure that we're using our business in a way that, um, you know, helps advance um, issues related to all of our stakeholders. So, and then just um, uh, one, one final question, and then I'd open it up to our students. Um, 
So how did you get where you are? So um, you, we were sharing a little bit about kind of career paths and um, could you just kind of tell the story of your own career path and, and a little bit about your role and how you see that role in this area of work uh, moving forward? Sure, yeah. Um, so I have a, I have a story. <laughs> <laughs> stories, right? Um, I had no idea that this career even existed when I was in college. And uh, um, yes, I am definitely older than, um, you know, most, if not all of you on this call. Um, <laughs> you know, I haven't been working um, for, you know, for decades and decades. Um, so when I went to um, college, I uh, actually studied chemical engineering. You know, I liked math and science and people said, you should be an engineer. And I said, okay, that sounds great. I had no idea what an engineer actually did every day. Um, and, you know, engineers are amazing. There's no doubt. Um, but I realized I didn't actually want to be an engineer. So I worked in management consulting. I worked in retail. I worked in marketing. I tried a few different things to try to figure out, you know, what I wanted to, what I wanted to be when I grew up, right? Um, and some of those shifts in careers were by choice. And some of them were not by choice. I actually have been laid off um, two different times in my career. Um, and the first time, you know, it was pretty rough. I was not expecting it, but the company was um, going through a downsizing. Um, I was promoted one month and laid off the next, and I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, you know, so I tried all these different things to try to figure out what my, my next path was. Um, I ended up going um, back to graduate school. I went to grad school part-time while I was working full-time um, to get an MBA. Um, because at that time I'd gotten into marketing and I thought that sounded really interesting. Um, but when I was in grad school, um, this is now 2007, um, so 13, almost 14 years ago, goodness gracious, um, I, I took a brand new class that was being offered at the time called Managing for Sustainability. It was being offered through the business school. It was an elective. It was brand new. It had never been taught before. And I read the course description. I said, oh, that sounds pretty interesting. And oh, yeah, I actually have, um, you know, that, that night is, a, it works for me, that time uh, for the class. Mm -hmm. So I signed up for the class and I was like, wow, you know, again, I had no idea that this career even existed. And in 2007, it still was a pretty new career. Um, it wasn't something that a lot of companies had dedicated teams, um, you know, focused on. Um, and so I decided, you know, this is what I wanted to do. It really aligned with my values, right? Um, I really cared about the environment. I cared about climate change. You know, I'd seen Al Gore's movie, An Inconvenient Truth, right? Um, and that actually um, really, um, you know, spoke to me very deeply. And, and, uh, and I felt like, oh, you know, I have kind of a technical mind, but I also am getting this business degree. You know, there's a lot of places maybe I could, you know, build this career in, in corporate resp responsibility or corporate sustainability. Um, but, uh, and so I interned, I did a couple of internships while I was finishing up grad school. Um, but then uh, I got out of grad school in 2008. And for those of you who remember 2008, that was during the Great Recession. So for any of you who are graduating during a pandemic, I feel your pain. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, it, it took me a while to find uh, my first full-time job in this space. It actually took me a whole year and a half um, after I got out of grad school to find my first full-time job working in a company doing this type of work. Um, and, and that was actually at my previous company. They hired me and I was there for five years. I've now been at this company for six years. And that's a really long story. So I appreciate y'all hanging in there through that. <laughs> um, but I think the point of it is, right, you know, I had no idea what the heck I wanted to do when I was coming out of college. And, you know, some days I still am like, hmm, maybe want to shift things in a little different direction. I don't know. Um, but I tried a lot of different things. Again, some by choice, some not by choice, right? And I think, um, you know, all of that to say that you don't have to have it all figured out now. I sure as heck didn't, right? I don't have it figured out yet, right? That's okay. Um, you know, you can't always control what life throws at you, right? If life throws a pandemic or, you know, God forbid, an illness or who knows what, right? You can't control what life throws at you you can control how you react to it and, and what you do, um, you know, with that information and how you choose to move forward. Um, so I would just say that, you know, whatever, you know, you have an idea of now, if you know exactly what you want to do, that is amazing. That's fantastic. And if you don't know, that's okay too. That's amazing. That's fantastic. You will figure it out. It's all good. Um, so I guess, you know, that's, that's kind of my advice. If you are interested in, in this particular career path, I will say that um, you know these types of jobs have you know certainly exploded over the last decade, um, even in the last two or three years, and a lot of that is interest from investors 
who are, you know, investing in companies like mine who are saying, wow, we want to make sure that our investment grows over time, right? We want to make money from this investment. And if companies aren't focusing on these issues, then, you know, are they really, you know, doing a great job of managing the company overall? Are they focusing on managing other risks to the company? Because a lot of these issues absolutely could be risks. And so companies are hiring more and more people in these types of positions, not just large, global, you know, publicly traded companies, um, but small to mid-sized companies are also hiring people to focus on some of these issues, um, you know, again, partly because of this investor interest. And I think also partly because a lot of these issues really are impacting all of our day-to-day -day lives, right? Um, climate change absolutely will continue to be a defining part of the, you know, the conversation for the next how many decades to come, right? Um, you know, a lot of issues related to, um, you know, um, diversity and inclusion and equity, right, and racial justice, a lot of those types of things, you know, um, you think companies would have had their act together, but I tell you, like the activities um, that have happened in the United States with the murder of George Floyd and a lot of the things that happened in the U.S. over the past several months have really gotten a lot of companies to open their eyes and recognize that um, there is a lot more that they need to be doing to support their employees and support their communities in these areas. Um, so I think it's just a really exciting field to be in because there are so many different angles that you can be um, a part of. You can work in any type of industry you want. I will also say to you, I never said, I'm going to work in commercial real estate. I don't know anything about commercial real estate. Um, that was just, you know, the first company that happened to hire me in this field um, was a commercial real estate company. And so, and then this company that I'm at now, CBRE, um, hired me because of the experience I got at my last company. Um, so, so Jeff, I hope that answers your question a little bit. Hopefully I didn't bore you all with my personal story, but hopefully um, it gave you a little bit of an idea of kind of how I got to where I'm at. No, thank you so much for sharing that. That's exactly right. Uh, careers are a marathon and, um, and you really talked about really the, the, the journey of that. And it's not always linear, very often it isn't linear. And one of the things you mentioned is really the role of serendipity. I was really struck by, boy, this class fits my schedule. <laughs> you know, and then that becomes a life changer, you know, or I never expected I'd be in commercial real estate, but that's the job I got. And once I'm in it, I go, wait a minute, there's a whole lot more here. So those, those kinds of discoveries and the serendipities are a piece of that. Um, thank you for sharing that. Well, I, let me just uh, thank you so much, uh, Jennifer, for taking the time this afternoon. I do want to make one quick statement for our students, and this is uh, doing a favor for Jennifer and for me. You notice that our names have an E-I or an I-E in the last name. That's a, that, that's a German origin name. And the trick is always pronounce the second vowel. Always pronounce the second vowel. So uh, I have been called thighs more often than you'd want to know, and it's these. So just and I've been called leech, you know, and I'm not a leech. Like, I really don't think of myself as a leech. So uh... exactly. exactly. <laughs> Please do us that favor. So Jennifer, thank you so much for sharing. Um, and, uh, you know, not just your, your own personal and professional experience and journey, but really the, the role of corporate responsibility. And you really highlighted how it functions professionally, but also how it functions within an organization and especially within a global corporation. And what you talked about is just the aspiration of impact really tied into strategy, with, which always has tactics and deliverables which need to be audited and then reported upon that whole process, really fundamentally of transparency about that, that enables not just the organization to organize itself around those things, but also the investing class and broader stakeholders to be able to see the authenticity of that. And so thank you so very much for sharing that. It's been just an absolute honor and pleasure to have the opportunity for this dialogue with you today. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much, Jeff. And thank you very much for all of you for, for um, tuning in for all of your great questions and your interest. And uh, yeah, I certainly wish you all the best. Um, if, anyone's, if anyone wants to connect with me on LinkedIn, um, I would be happy to accept your um, LinkedIn connection request as well.